It's the Chronicles of Aguna. It's a pre-recorded edition, but we've got some big, big news to discuss. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. And this, as you can probably tell, is an impromptu edition of the show. I was planning to take the day off today, wasn't going to bring you any content today, unfortunately, uh, but was going to come back with a bang tomorrow following Arsenal's game against Burnley at Emirates Stadium. However, between, uh, obviously, uh, yesterday and today, there's been some news. There's been some news with regards to Mikel Arteta's future. And there's also been an exclusive interview with Granite Xhaka that I think makes interesting reading. Therefore, I decided to jump on. Now, as you can see, I'm not in the studio. I don't have all the equipment with me, which is why uh, the sound quality might not be uh, what it normally is. The picture quality certainly isn't up to scratch. So for those things, uh, I do apologise. But I just wanted to bring you some reaction on this short, as I say, impromptu edition of the Chronicles of Aguna to the news that Arsenal are planning to offer Mikel Arteta a new contract before the end of the season. Now, this news uh, was broken by Matt Hughes of the Daily Mail, and this report started doing the rounds yesterday. Now, Mikel Arteta has divided opinion among the Arsenal fan base since he took over. There were a lot of fans that uh, were dead against his appointment. Um, there were a lot of fans that felt that we should have probably looked for a more experienced option. I was one of those people at the time when we were being talked about um, as, as having an interest in both Arteta and Ancelotti. I was very much beating the Carlo Ancelotti drum. He was the guy that I wanted to see come in. He had a proven track record. And I actually thought that we'd gone wrong in appointing Emery after Wenger and then found ourselves in a situation where we'd done more damage and needed an experienced and calm head to steady the ship and at least help Arsenal sort of kind of hit their minimum objectives. Um, remember, at the time Wenger left, we weren't, I don't think, as far off of the top four um, as we've ended up. We certainly weren't in eighth place. I think sixth place was probably the worst finish. Um, and then, of course, Unai Emery came in and, and missed out just about on the top four. But it felt to me like we still weren't a million miles away from it. And so an experienced head um, would have would have been the right option. But an experienced head um, it, it wasn't necessarily what the club were looking at in terms of the longevity of this next project. And actually, as time's gone by, I've kind of come to realise that I think although the club make a lot of mistakes and a lot of errors, I, I kind of think they were right in going down the route of a longer term project because we may have got back into the top four, um, you know, quickly or quicker under a, a Carlo Ancelotti or somebody of that ilk. But we weren't actually facing and fixing the problems head on. It was kind of, uh, you know, I think it would have been papering over the cracks. Maybe that tactical nous that experience would have got us over the line with the players we had. But I think for a long time at Arsenal, the heart and soul of the team has needed ripping out and changing. And I think Mikel Arteta's done a lot of that. You know, he's he's changed the culture in a lot of ways. He's moved on players who don't buy into the project, don't buy into the philosophy. And while at times I think he's been criticised for that, um, you know, I, I think that for the most part, he's done the right thing. And I think actually... And and I've said this before, you know, sometimes you can cut your nose off to spite your face and you can end up weakening your team in the short term uh, by being so big on discipline. But at the end of the day, it was something that needed to happen. And I think what we're starting to see now is those characters being weeded out of the team and, and removed from the club. And we're building, you know, we are building. And I think that there is a lot to be optimistic about with regards to Mikel Arteta and the direction in which the team is travelling. But... I also think that it might be a little bit too soon to be offering Mikel Arteta a new contract. Now, why do I think that? Those of you who watch and listen to this on a regular basis will know that 
you know, I'm a massive fan of the job that Mikel Arteta's done and he's doing. I'm a big fan of his um, and, I, and I support him all the way. But when you look at the cold, hard facts and the cold, hard facts are, yes, an FA Cup victory, but then two eighth placed finishes in the Premier League. I think you, you'd you be, you know, I think you'd be biased and, and you'd have your blinkers on if you're sitting there saying that there's no way we can question this decision, that it's absolutely 100% the right thing. I think a lot of us are positive and are optimistic. And I like to think that I am one of those people that's kind of reading between the lines and trying to see the, the overall and bigger picture about it all. But I can understand the opposition to that view. I can understand why there will be Arsenal fans out there who are thinking, what on earth has this guy done to warrant or justify being offered a contract extension? Now, according to this report from Matt Hughes of the Daily Mail, Arsenal are set to offer him a new two-year deal with an improved salary. Uh, apparently, the club have been impressed by the Spaniards' work in the first two seasons. And Arsene, Arteta's current um, contract is due to expire at the same time as Pep Guardiola's at Manchester City. And now, look, I don't think that Mikel Arteta is ready to manage a team that are willing or not willing, but ready to compete right at the top level. I don't think he's done enough. I don't think he's got enough on his CV to justify that appointment. But there have been rumblings, you know, in the past and, and recently that Manchester City do look at this guy as a potential successor. They like what he does. They obviously know him very, very well. And so offering him this new deal for me is, is something that Arsenal are doing to protect themselves from the future risk of Mikel Arteta walking away um, leaving them in a the lurch and, and going to a club like Manchester City where he can compete immediately. Um, in the past, you know, we've been burnt by giving people contracts that maybe they didn't completely deserve or giving people contracts based on what they've done in the past as opposed to what they might do in the future. Uh, but I think this is clever planning from the club. And, and as I say, look, if it were me, if I were Arsenal Football Club, and obviously this story's come out from the Daily Mail, and if we assume it's true, it's obviously been leaked somewhere. If I were the club, um, if I were those behind the scenes working on, on coming up with this agreement with Mikel Arteta, I'd be doing it. I'd be working on it behind the scenes because me personally, I think he's done a good job. And I think he will get better. And I think the team is getting better. And I think the recruitment's been better, um, you know, albeit a lack of it this month. I think overall we are moving uh, in the right direction. But what I would say is I don't think the Arsenal fan base has been this united for a long time. You know, we, we're defending our team at the moment with everything. You know, there have been a lot of moments recently when you can question... Uh, the way people have spoken about us, the treatment that we've received from referees, uh, from the officials, from, uh, you know, the the media, the backlash that we faced when we got a game postponed in comparison to all the other sides who were getting games postponed left, right and centre, I think has been uh, crazy. But it feels like the Arsenal fan base are together again and united. And I think that's because people are starting to see the progress and starting to see the culture that is being created. Mikel Arteta, whatever you say about him, has defended this club and continues to do so. I think he's a really good representative of the football club. And I think you've got to be behind him at this stage. We're in the running for the top four, which is, I think, more than a lot of people expected from us this season. But there are still... a a big amount of fans out there, a huge amount of fans out there who are not sure whether he's the man to take us forward. And I just think by coming out with this kind of thing now, what you're doing is you're risking uh, splitting the fan base in half again. You know, just because some people have turned towards the, yeah, we're moving in the direction, uh, the right direction, sorry, point of view, it doesn't mean that they're totally convinced he's the man that should lead the club for years to come. So as I said, just I've gone around the houses, but the point I was trying to make is that if I were in charge of the football club and I believe that Mikel Arteta is the right man, I think you can do this. I think you can line this up, but you can do it behind the scenes and you can do it behind the scenes, um, you know, ensuring it doesn't come out and ensuring that those fans who are starting to come around to the idea of Mikel Arteta don't feel as though the club are just panicking and making a decision pretty much based on nothing. If he finishes in the top four this season, that would be a wonderful achievement. And I think he'll be deserving of a new contract. 
I've said it before, anything outside of the top six is a, is a disaster for me. But if we finish within the top six and we continue to see improvement uh, in a lot of areas and that we continue to go out and recruit the right type of players, then I think there's a lot to be positive about. And you can understand the extension in that case. But right now, we haven't achieved any of those things. We haven't finished in the top four. We haven't finished in the top six. And so I think this is just all a little bit premature. So while I understand that the club will need to get the wheels in motion for something like this well ahead of time, I don't like the fact that it's come out. I don't like the fact that it's a big story and that it's doing the rounds. And I think if this is the approach that the club are going to take, I'm not saying that I want the club to lie to us, but I think you have to be smart in the way you manage uh, these kind of situations. And wherever this leak has come from, I think all this leak seeks to do um, is a get a shit ton of clicks, which is the name of the game these days, but also uh, divide a fan base that are finally united and finally coming together. Look, we don't know that that offer's there. We don't know that the contract has been agreed. We don't know any of it. So what I would say is just kind of keep calm about it um, and and let's react to it when the time comes. Let's react to it when we hear that Mikel Arteta signed the new contract and make our judgment then. Um, as with a lot of things in football, you have to work a, ahead of time. In the past, we've been bad at planning. We've been bad at tying people down to contract. Um, you know, and, and now it seems that we're trying to work in a different way and, and people will still be critical, of course. But look, I just think that in my personal opinion, this contract offer is premature based on the eighth place finishes and based on the fact that we're not guaranteed not to finish in the top four and we're not guaranteed to finish in the top six even. So there's a long way to go, I would say, before Mikel Arteta has earned more time um, in this job. But there have been positives as well and there have been signs that we're moving in the right direction. So as I keep saying, I agree. I see both sides of this. I just would have kept this quiet. I would have kept this in-house. And I don't like the fact that this story has been leaked because it's one that seeks to divide. It's one uh, that seeks to derail Arsenal at a time where, although we got knocked out of the Carabao Cup semi-final, people are starting to look at us as a threat again. People are starting to look at us as a club moving in the right direction. So don't let it divide us is the point I'm trying to make. When that decision is taken, when the contract announcement comes, I think we'll look at it then. Um, and while I'm not saying that Matt Hughes's information is wrong or that he's lying or that he's just trying to get clicks, I, I, these stories come out in a lot of the time when they're related to Arsenal with the intention of doing damage rather than good. Um, so just bear that in mind. It's us against the world at the moment. We've we've really felt that, I would say, in the last few months. And that's part of what's made us united again. So don't let them divide us. Um, whatever your opinion and view is on Mikel Arteta at this moment in time, uh, you know, the club are going to take their decision, whether they've already taken that decision. Uh, we don't actually know, although that's what this report states. Um, but look, you know, if if they do tie him down, if they have agreed a contract behind the scenes and then we go and finish in the top four, there'll be a lot of people saying that it was a masterstroke. So all I'm saying is you can't always judge a decision at, at, at the time it's taken. You know, you should do that. You should try and do that wherever possible. But a lot of the time, hindsight is what gives us the um, the ability to appreciate whether a decision was right or wrong. You know, when we signed Nicolas Pepe, lots of us were buzzing about it. Exciting winger. Um, good age, lots of great attributes, £72 million. Pound. Arsenal had turned the corner. They'd broken the bank to bring in a top, top player. And look how that worked out. You know, when Unai Emery came in, there were a lot of Arsenal fans that were hugely optimistic about that. You know, he's a U serial Europa League winner. Bring him in. And that didn't work out either. You know, when, when Aubameyang signed his new contract, we were delighted. Look how that's gone. When Ozil signed his contract, we were delighted. Look how that's gone. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that your feeling at the time of it, um, you know, is is one. And, and that's your entitlement to have that opinion and have that view, whether you think it is premature, the offer of this new contract, or whether you think it's deserved. That's down to you. But you'll only really know if it was the right decision a little bit further down the line. So let's not overreact at this news, I guess, is the point I'm trying to make. Um, do I personally think he's deserved it? I think he's done a lot of good things. And I personally am leaning slightly towards the idea that um, 
if you know if we've if we're going to back this project with money if we're going to back this project with investment if we're going to back this project um as fans and back these young players to develop continuity is important and i think continuing under Mikel Arteta is important for a lot of these guys so i'm slightly leaning towards the side of i think this is the right way to go but as i say i also appreciate that it might be slightly premature in its timing and there's a long way to go before Mikel Arteta is going to convince everyone of his managerial credentials so that's my take on that. Let's move on. Let's quickly touch on uh, the interview that Granite Xhaka has given uh, to Sky Sports. There's a few uh, bits and pieces from that I just want to share with you guys. Uh, of course, he's been heavily criticised, hasn't he, for uh, some recent red cards, for some recent decision making uh, in the penalty area against Manchester City. I, I was still, you know, I, I'm still to this day mystified as to how many Arsenal fans took the opportunity to condemn Granit Xhaka that day as opposed to the referee who gave a really soft penalty uh, against us and was shocking from minute one to 90. Uh, but yeah, Granit Xhaka has insisted that uh, despite those issues, he's not going to change the way he plays after he picked up his fifth red card of his Arsenal career. Um, he told Sky Sports in an exclusive interview for Soccer Saturday, it's not like I'm planning this. It's not like I'm doing this on purpose, but sometimes I'm in a position where I have to take a 50-50. It's risky, of course, and people will say, yeah, but why do you always take risks? This is who I am. I can't change myself from today to tomorrow. Of course, I need to improve and I know I need to improve. But in this moment, if Jota takes the ball and he scores, they will say again, why didn't you stop him? Now I stop him. They say, why did you get the red card? In the end, after the game, everyone is smarter than in the moment myself as well. Of course, when I see it back now and say, do I need to go into that duel or not? No. But it is a moment, a second where I have to make a decision. And this time I made the wrong one. And I'm sorry to the team. I feel sorry for the supporters, but thank to God they did an amazing job after that. Um, and I think that's a great point, you know, I, and, and I do feel like we're at that point with Granit Xhaka where you know, if he doesn't make the challenge, people are complaining that he's allowed the, um, the the player to go through and score. I think for me, going back to that particular incident and that particular game, and I know there have been countless others, so that's not what solely, or that's not at least solely what people's opinions are based on with regards to Xhaka. But what I would say is this, um, you know, we, we did manage to get the result. He did prevent us what might have been a certain goal. Um, but, you know, Hindsight, as I said, with the, the Arteta thing is, is a wonderful thing and people will always look at that. Uh, but this kind of, this opinion of Xhaka that the fan base holds, you know, I think is is unfair in a lot of ways. I think there have been stupid moments. I think you should criticise him for those moments. But do we give the same energy to praising him when he does perform and when he does bring uh, something to this midfield that we've quite clearly been lacking without him? Um you know, and, and to kind of sum up the feeling around Granite Xhaka of late and over the last few seasons, all you needed to do was look at the response to those reports that came out about the yellow card and the suspicious yellow card. No one, not a single person on Twitter was aware of who that investigation was around and which player it was that was said to be in, uh, involved in that particular incident. Nobody, not a single person, because it was kept under wraps on purpose for the purpose of the discussion, uh, the, the investigation and to ensure that that investigation was carried out with the utmost integrity, that kind of information, it doesn't get out. OK, yet a large proportion of the Arsenal fan base decided to pin it on Granite Xhaka and assume that Granite Xhaka was the man in question. Maybe he was, but we have no way of belief of knowing that it's speculation. Yet when it comes to Granite Xhaka, we seem to have this amazing ability as a fan base to turn speculation into fact and then for everybody to pile on and start with a criticism. And I just think that that's, um, that's completely unfair. Um, he, he also touched on the 2-1 uh, uh, loss against Manchester City on New Year's Day. He said, if you look in slow motion... Uh, every duel, every foul looks too much. And he also said against City, Stuart Atwell had decided already it wasn't a penalty. But after they go to the VAR and check and check and check, and the thing is they're checking two pictures, three pictures, and they're not seeing all the action. He said, I hope in the future 
that referees can make their own decisions, not let people from the outside look in slow motion and stuff like this, because I believe in a slow motion, everything looks harder than it is. In the end, we're all human beings. They make mistakes as well. This is part of the job. Everybody makes mistakes. We have to accept decisions, though, and move forward. Uh, he also talked about the um, the criticism that Arsenal got off the back of that uh, postponement of the North London derby. He said this, I just feel like when it's Arsenal, everybody wants to lump in for some reason. Completely agree. Um, uh, sorry, that's what Micah Richards said. My my bad. Uh, let me just uh, re, re... Yeah, M Micah Richards said, I just feel like when it's Arsenal, everyone wants to lump in for some reason. And Xhaka said, this is nothing new for me. Every time this football club does something, everyone has something to say. I love the comment from Micah Richards, what he said about it. He said, every time Arsenal does something, everyone has to speak, but nobody speaks when other clubs did. So thanks, Micah, for the comment. I love it. Um, he also talked about Mikel Arteta. Uh, he said, we had a very bad start. Uh, we're hoping to start much better than we did, but how we came back, how we believed in ourselves and how we believe in the philosophy of Mikel is amazing. He said, Mikel is a freak, but a freak in a positive way. He sees football with different eyes and in different ways. He's so focused on the job he's doing, and I think he's improved all the players we have in the squad. I think in the past, our problem was always when we lost the game, we lost the second and third and fourth and fifth. And after that, we started to win. That's changed this season. We don't concede um, many stupid goals anymore or a lot of goals. We were struggling in the beginning to score, but now we're doing that much better. I have a feeling that we have a very good balance between defending and attacking, and this makes us strong at the moment. We're in a good position uh, and we want to keep going. Let's see what happens after 38 games. So another player who's fully on board uh, with Mikel Arteta, clearly. Um, and despite all that kind of speculation in the summer about him moving away, he stayed and he's been committed. And, and I don't think you can question the commitment of his performances, even if you do question his ability and certain attributes. That's fair. That's fine. Um, but, you know, commitment is definitely there. And I just wanted to touch on some of the comments from that interview um, as well as obviously react to that Mikel Arteta news. So just in summary on the Mikel Arteta news, where am I at on it? Um, I personally have that feeling that we're moving in the right direction, uh, that the plan is there. Um, although there will be moments in it that will be difficult as fans when we're seeing poor and abject performances, when we're seeing the squad thin. But part of the process is moving out players in order to clear space to bring new ones in. And where people have been very critical of Arsenal moving players out during this window without bringing any in, I think for me, it's something that had to happen. You know, people talked a lot, didn't they, about how much KSE spent in the summer, how much they backed the club and backed the team uh, to improve. But that kind of investment was never going to be mirrored in January. Um, you know, or maybe it will. Maybe we will go out and make a big sign in between now and the end of the window. But that's only going to happen if we remove certain players off the wage bill. And you talk about Ser Kolasinac off the wage bill. That's a big deal. 100 grand a week he was on, uh, supposedly. Um, when you're talking about the rumours linking Aubameyang with a move away, you know, you might not get rid of his wages in the immediate kind of term if he goes and joins a club on loan. Um, but if there is that obligation to buy clause in there from Al Nazir, as has been reported, then you save all of Aubameyang's wages next season, where, of course, he would still be under contract at the Arsenal. So I think Arsenal are trying really hard to free up money um, and to, to clear space to bring players in. It doesn't mean I'm happy with the work they've done so far in this window. I'm not. But I think it's clear that we're in a position where we do need to move people on and we do need to make space before we can then dive into the market again. And although they spent a bit last summer and although people kind of felt that maybe they changed in their view and approach as to how the club should be run. Remember, this is KSE and remember that we operate in a self-sustaining way and that, that, you know, despite last summer, I've seen nothing to indicate that that's going to dramatically change. So I think we always probably should have been conscious and mindful and at least aware of the fact that before the next wave of recruits come in, just like happened before this last wave of recruits coming in, we had to clear people. And it's not always easy to do that. You know, you, you've got to find buyers for these players and you've got to have the players wanting to leave. They've got to be willing to, to forego whatever it is that they're owed by the club. Um, and if that's a superior wage to what anybody else is going to offer them, it's it's difficult. It's tricky. But again, this is a mistake. And these are mistakes of the past. 
and, and mistakes that I don't think you can hold Edu and Mikel Arteta accountable for. Fingers crossed we get some more business done between now and the end of the window because it's necessary, I think. I think we're in a real danger of letting all the good work we've done so far this season slide because we're, you know, if, if we fail to bring in the players that we need. Um, my view on what we need has shifted slightly. Um, I was kind of very, you know, big on the midfield thing going into the AFCON. Uh, but of course, you know, Thomas Partey's back, albeit suspended for tomorrow's game. Mohamed Elneny's not a million miles away from returning as well. And when you think that Granit Xhaka will be back after Burnley as well. I now probably look at the centre forward position as as one of of greater urgency, particularly if Pierre Emerick Aubameyang is not going to be brought back into the fold. So, for me, it's the centre forward position that we really need to sort out because the prospect of playing the remainder of the season with with a burnt out Alexander Lacazette and Enketia as his only real deputy, it's it's a concerning one, and it could cause us uh, falling slightly short. So, um, as I say, when Elneny's back. When Partey and Xhaka are, are back from their suspensions, you've then got four central midfielders for two positions and we're not in Europe, we're not in the Cups. So you'd feel um, that barring some really bad luck that we'd be OK there. Um, and, and the focus, in my opinion now, for the last eight, nine days of the window, should shift to the centre forward position. But we'll see what happens. So, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry, it's a pre-recorded version. As I say, uh, not working today, not on it, having a day off uh, before we get back into things for the Arsenal Burnley game tomorrow. But given the news that broke last night with regards to Mikel Arteta and the supposed contract offer and uh, an interesting interview with Granite Xhaka, I felt it was worth jumping on and dropping an episode. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Don't forget to check out Athletic Greens as well. We'll be back very, very soon with more. Until next time. Goodbye. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.